الرحيم ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن دعا بدعوته واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين سلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد أوصيكم ونفسي بالتقوى الله عز وجل والسمع والطاعة ويقول الحق سبحانه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا زديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praises are due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. And surely the best reward ultimately is for those who have taqwa. And surely there is no animosity except for the oppressor. And I bear witness that Allah is one and has no partners. That Muhammad the son of Abdullah is his servant and his last messenger. And may Allah always and constantly send peace and blessings to Muhammad, to his family, to his companions, to all those who call to his way and establish his sunnah to the day of judgment. As to what follows, I begin by cautioning myself and you to have taqwa, al-khawf wa raja that we should fear Allah and hope in the mercy of Allah. And this consciousness builds a type of waqaya, a type of shield around the believer that protects the believer not only in the masjid but outside of the masjid. Not only on special occasions as Jumu'ah but during the rest of the week. And so I caution myself and you with this. And that we should remember Allah Azza wa Jal in everything that we do at school on the job, in the streets, we should remember there is one who is closer to us than our juggler veins. O you who believe, Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed this book from above seven heavens. And in it he has revealed, O you who believe, have the consciousness of Allah and speak a straightforward word. He would repair your deeds and forgive you of your sins and whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has surely gained a mighty triumph. And so I speak to you today with this spirit because the time is moving rapidly and so many people looked at Ramadan in the beginning and suddenly it was gone. And the Prophet Sallallahu had told us يتقارب الزمان that time would come close Things would change as we go toward the day of resurrection. The Muslim world today is in a critical situation. And we need to be able to reflect upon what we have done, upon who we are in these moments coming out of this blessed month and into the rest of the year. For some people, Ramadan is a door which opens to the rest of the year. It is only the beginning of a movement that continues for the whole of the calendar. For others, Ramadan is an ending and does not come back until the next year. But Abdullah, the servant of Allah, for Abdullah, his Lord is Hayyun La Yamut. His Lord is alive and never dies. And when Ramadan ends, he continues in his struggle. The lessons that we learned in Ramadan, the things that we were told, the changes that happened in our lives, continue for the rest of the month. Because surely this was not done, this is not abath, this is not done in jest. There is a reason why we are put into this month. There is a reason why we are not eating food and drinking. Why would the Prophet say, Rubba Sa'iman Laysa Lahum Siyam Yil Al Jua? Why would he say there are some people who fast and get nothing from their fast but they're hungry? 
وَرُبَّ قَائِمًا لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ قِيَامِهِ إِلَى السَّحْ There are some who will stand in the night and get nothing from their qiyam but sleeplessness. Why would he say this? There's something behind this. There is something that we should learn. What are the ibba? What are the lessons that we are learning from Ramadan? How can this affect our lives? One of the great lessons we have understood in Ramadan is that the essence of fasting is taqwa. As Allah Azawajal has revealed to us in the oft-repeated verses, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min tablikum la'allakum taqtaqoon. So taqwa, fasting has been prescribed on you in order that you would have taqwa. So while we are fasting, we are experiencing ziyada to taqwa. An increase in time, increase in our relationship with Allah Azza How can this assist us in the world we are living in today? Muslims find themselves in the newspaper, in the media, they find themselves in a very difficult situation. It appears that all of the news coming out of the Muslim world is bad news. We are being demonized. Many people feel frustration inside of themselves. How can Ziyadah to Taqwa help us in this time that we are living? In Surah Al-Anfal, Allah Azza wa Jalla has revealed to us, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, in taqtaku allaha yaj'al lakum furqana wa yukaffi ankum sayyatikum wa yarfi lakum wallahu dhu fadl adhi. Allah tells us, O you who believe, if you have Taqwa, in taqtaqullah, if you have the consciousness of Allah, يَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ فُرْقَانًا He would make for you a furqan, and He would forgive you of your sins. He would wipe away the wrong you have done, and Allah is most bountiful. He is the possessor of the greatest bounty. Imam al-Shawkani rahimahullah, in his fatu al-Qadir, in looking at the word furqan, what is this furqan? Taqwa gives us furqan. The Imam Rahimahullah, as many of the Ahimma of Tafsir, have shown us this furqan is the criteria. It is that which separates al-haq min al batil That which separates truth from falsehood. So fasting, Ramadan, gives us the ability to separate the truth from the falsehood. We look at the world in a different way. This ability needs to stay with us after Ramadan. But the Imam Rahimahullah also said that Furqan means the battle qulu wa quwwat al basair wa husn al hidayah. That this Furqan is will give you the battle qulu, strengthening of the hearts. And surely today, with the conditions in the world, with the extremes that Muslims are on, we, our hearts need to be consolidated. Our hearts need to be strong. And secondly, quwwat al basar That we would have this basira to look not just on the outside of issues, but look inside. Insight. Because today, you and I will be called upon to look at our situation as Muslims, not just on the surface.